Um, you mentioned an audience, and that's something that I really wanted to address in this interview with you. Um, it seems like you're, you're deliberately targeting non-art audience, and I know that has a lot to do with the fact that the show is taking place during the summer, and we have a very different audience during that time. But is it a deliberate? Are you deliberately trying to um, counteract or be in opposition to a kind of elitist art audience, or is it just the fact that we have a different audience during the summer? I think, uh, at the risk of speaking for both of us, you know, we're both Alex and I in our various works that we've done prior to the show are committed to social justice practice and, um, and a praxis of engaging lots of kinds of stakeholders, is the way I would say it. Okay. So, I, from my perspective, and I'm curious how Alex, you answer, the show is cognizant of the, of the narrowing bandwidth of audiences that often engage um, small liberal arts college campuses and or art galleries. And it, rather than being against that, is attempting to understand or, or explore rather how might we expand that bandwidth. And one of the ways to think about who do we invite into college spaces and who has ownership of them, who do we invite into galleries, whether they're on campuses or in large museum institutions, and who has ownership there, as artists, as audiences, as provocateurs, as administrators. But then also back out to YouTube. So hopefully the show productively collapses notions of high and low. Um, while, while not being naive to the, to the, to the power dynamics in play. And um, mindful of this new audience, I'm going to try and wrap up because we've gone way okay. too long for okay. YouTube. <laughs> Things on YouTube should be two or three minutes long. I think we're already at six or seven, so um, I'll answer quickly and then maybe we can end for yeah. today. Um, I think that um, a lot of the motivation for what has brought us together is thinking about artwork in a deeply political um, and community-centered way. And it is not to suggest that the art world itself isn't one place in the world that is a community and is political. Um, but it is, for, for, so it isn't about saying no to the art world, it's about opening the art world up to have conversations and value those kinds of practices that Pure, deeply and purely, and is equally artistic mm -hmm. as um, any of the highly manufactured, perfectly crafted objects um, that count as high art um, maintain. Mm -hmm. So, um, a lot of what this show to me is about is about conversations, it's about building community, it's about um, producing ideas across spaces that are usually closed off to each other, and so that includes the art world and links it to elementary school teachers, college professors, on the street activists, train artists, curators. Yeah. I mean, I've always been interested in, in producing vibrant communities of conversation mm -hmm. across boundaries that usually keep us in check. Yeah, and I think the show is attempting to make an assertion that the space is now open for all of us, and that's really the experiment, and both the risk and the possibility of the show, and I'm really excited that you sort of allowed us to work together and, and open this space up, and, and I'm glad that you guys are now joining us via YouTube. And thank you, Kira Ennis, who didn't introduce yourself. Kira, it's your art galleries for having us. Well, of course, it's absolutely my pleasure, but there are a number of other questions I'd love to ask you both, and I'm wondering whether we can reconvene during, perhaps during the, the duration of the show, perhaps a month in, when we'll have probably different questions. Cool. So thanks a lot. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Stay tuned. Bye, you too. Bye.